Imagine growing up in a world where you are overlooked. What if you do not see yourself anywhere? What if you don't feel any connection? Until society represents everyone, the questions will always be, where do I belong? Do I belong? It is time to rethink representation. Now, I believe representation is vital because it provides the opportunity for your existence to be acknowledged in this world. Now, representation can take many forms, some of which are more obvious than others and some of which cannot be seen. After all, we all have many identities. You cannot see that I am dyslexic. You might not know that I believe in God, but the one thing that you can definitely see is that I'm black. Representation matters. Now, of all of my identities, my race has had the biggest impact on my life. And the reason why it's had such an impact on my life is because it's so significant. And whilst I may have many different identities, it's through the lens of race that I talk to you today. I want to explore racial representation over time because I've always had this need to see representation. The theme has been a golden thread throughout my life. So it's the 80s. My nan is a nurse in a Bristol hospital, and she's on her lunch break, and her colleague is reading a newspaper, and there is a picture of a monkey. He calls her over and he says, Evelyn, have a look at this. It's your cousin. Now, my nan was deeply upset and disturbed by this, and she spoke to the sister in charge, only to be told, do not take this to the race relation board, because he will lose his job an apology would suffice. But it's different now, isn't it? It's the 90s. My mum is a primary school teacher. And she talks of a time when she went to a kick racism at a football event, and she and the children were chanted at. They suffered the most horrific racism, and yet not one person challenged it only to seek counsel from her head teacher and then be told, leave your culture at the door, as if she could unzip her black skin, hang it up, and collect it at the end of the day. But it's different now, isn't it? It's 2010, and my colleague calls me her coffee-colored friend, or perhaps a latte. Now, I challenge her on this, and I explain to her that I identify as black, and she says, I do not care what you say. Then she refers to a student, and she says, but you see him, he's black, so black he's scary. But it's different now, isn't it? It's 2013, and my fifth generation of my family are in the UK. And my youngest, he comes home from school, and he's upset. And I'm like, why are you crying? He says, mummy, my friend said I can't come to your party because I'm, I'm black and I don't want to be black anymore. Imagine the pain in my heart when my son says to me, I don't want to be black anymore, because to be black means exclusion. But it's different now, isn't it? It's now 2019, and this is my baby. And me and him are at a restaurant, and we're talking. And then he starts to panic, and I'm like, well, what's wrong? He then points over and he says, Mommy, look, there's two police officers. So? But mummy, they hurt black people. Now, where has he got this from? Because it's not from me, and it's certainly not from his home life. It's from his social environment. And he's eight years old, and he already has this fear. So my question to you is, so is it different now? Now, these lived experiences are just some examples of the overt racism that me and my family have suffered. But what we must not neglect to do is talk about the subtle, the unconscious, the I don't see color type of racism. I go to complete an application form. I only have two options, black African, black Caribbean. I don't have the choice of being black British, and yet my parents are born here. I was born here. I blow dry my hair straight. I like to mix it up a little bit, you know, sometimes. And then my colleague said to me, Aisha, you look beautiful, you look stunning. Please keep your hair straight. That is the best version of you. 
as if my natural kinky coily hair is too extreme and isn't the best version of me. So I travel a lot in my job and I travel from London to Bristol and I'm on a pack train and I offer a seat next to me only for the lady to say, nope, I'd rather stand. So then the person in front of me, a white passenger, same offer, yes, please. I go to a training event and I pick up my badge and I sign in with my name and my title. Excuse me, are you sure you got the right badge? Mm, yeah, last time I checked, I was Aisha Thomas and I'm an assistant principal. Don't want to ask the badge. These are just some of my everyday experiences and it's difficult to express and share. What these stories have taught me to do, they've taught me to cope, to deal, to navigate, and sometimes to accept. And I have, to be honest, I have accepted racism and discrimination, but this is something that I can no longer do. However, getting to this point has not been easy. It has to be a true understanding of representation, and that's what I've had to learn along the way. So about 10 years ago, I was volunteering for the Prince's Trust, and I was working with young people, and I was helping them to get from prison and reintegrate into society. Now, volunteering in a young offenders institution is tough. I still remember the patting down of my body, the clanging of the keys, the locking of every door behind me, and the visiting hall was so cold, I could literally see my breath as I spoke. I felt scared, I felt trapped, and I felt vulnerable. And for the first time in my life, I didn't feel free. And as I sat there, I waited for this strong, arrogant, full of attitude and confidence young man to approach me. But where did I get this mental picture from? Was it the media? Was it music? Was it TV? Representation matters. But instead, this young childlike figure approached me, full of so much hope of a second chance, and yet he changed my life. So one day we were talking, and he stopped and he paused. And he said, perhaps if you were my teacher, I wouldn't be in prison today. All the white people in charge are the ones that get to make the decisions. And if I wanna be successful, I've got to be a drug dealer, I've got to be a footballer, or I've got to be an actor. Because that's the only way I can make money, and that's the only success that I see. Representation matters. Now, you've got to look at this and really understand that this young person saw his success in crime. Actually in crime. Then it dawned on me, what if you do see representation, but it has a specific narrative? If only he knew positive representation existed, but he had been denied access to it. At this point, I knew I was not having enough impact on young people. I was getting to them far too late. They were already part of the justice system. So then I decided to transition from the legal profession into education. Imagine empowering a young person to believe that they belong, so much so that they genuinely thrive in spite of prejudice. Now, that should be the norm, shouldn't it? But it's not the norm. Every day, black, Asian, and minority ethnic children are educated without seeing themselves in the curriculum or their environment. They walk into the classroom and they hear about the greatness of others, all that they have conquered and all that they have contributed, then they look at their skin and they say to themselves, where do I belong? What have my people achieved? Now, the Swan Report 1985 said, education for all, and yet we still continue to live in a time where inequalities in schools continue to dominate. 32 years later, the Running Me Trust report found that Bristol is a divided city. There is an evident lack of, di lack of diversity in both teach and staff and leadership. Just 4.4% of teachers in Bristol schools are black, Asian, and from minority ethnic backgrounds. And in 2018, we found that 
there were only 26 black teachers in state secondary schools in Bristol out of 1,346. Now, this isn't just about black teacher recruitment. And this just isn't about having a black person in the room. We must also look at our behavior, our language, our value, our influences. Let's take the words white and black. When I think of the word white, I think of positivity. Angels, bright, white, clean, fresh. When I think of the word black, I think of negativity. Black guard, black heart, black on black crime, black list, black sheep of the family. You don't buy it? Take some time later just making a list and you will soon see the pattern that's perpetuated a culture of prejudice. Yet we don't criticize it. We're paralyzed. We accept the status quo because those are our social norms, aren't they? We play into the hands of racial hierarchy, bias and representative oppression because those are the cards that we've been dealt. But imagine a world where you could teach a child the value of all races. Imagine, just imagine that for a moment. Racial superiority would be stripped of its crown and all races would be sworn in with equal importance. Our children would grow with a sense of value, connection, and understanding of difference. Imagine if they knew Una Morrison was the first female black broadcaster for the BBC. Imagine if they knew Lonnie G. Johnson was the inventor of the super soaker and was an engineer. Imagine if they knew that Marie Van Britten was the inventor of the first home CCTV. And imagine if they knew that Garrett Morgan was an inventor of a version of the free light traffic light system. Representation matters more than we know. We must all use our positions of privilege and influence to better advance all communities to build an environment of positive representation. Let us all use our experiences to change the culture. We owe it to ourselves but we also owe it to our future generations. The truth is, if we could just believe in the contributions of others and appreciate them, we would soon see the value in everyone. My experiences are just an illustration of the impact of the lack of representation. But imagine a world where everyone was recognized and respected and acknowledged in all aspects of life. Isn't that a world that we all deserve? Representation really matters. <laughs>